Hello my loves and welcome to Strange Playgrounds. Now if you've been paying attention to current events at all over the last few days you will know that a uh, Tennessee school board decided to ban from its curriculum Art Spiegelman's graphic novel Mouse. This has caused quite a stir and quite rightly so. Um, all over the internet, but not just the internet, amongst people in general. It's a, you know, the decision to ban a book from a curriculum for any reason is often cause for concern. Very, very often it's cause for concern. In fact, the decision to ban a book from anywhere is often cause for concern. There are so many pieces of work out there that I find perfectly objectionable. We've discussed some of them on this channel and why I find them objectionable. Um, I would refer you back to my discussion on the Chronicles of Narnia books by C.S. Lewis, uh, for which I have an incredible amount of ambiguity. Those books, uh, despite being inspiring and beautiful in many ways, are also morally objectionable in many others, particularly books like The Horse and His Boy. The Horse and His Boy is categorically, deliberately, and ideologically racist on any number of levels. It's a perfectly vile book in many, many ways. Does that mean that I would have it banned? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It, my copy is right, I can see it from here, it is right on top of my shelf alongside my other uh, copies of the other Narnia books and will remain there. Just as if I glance over at my bookshelf over there, I can see works by, for example, Ayn Rand, who I loathe on every level. Object I, I just absolutely detest in terms of her her ideology, her writing, her philosophies, everything she espoused and every ounce of influence she has and continues to have upon our cultures and society. I think she is perhaps one of the most damaging writers who ever existed, certainly in the postmodern era. But I uh, would I have people not read them? No, absolutely not. I would say go and read them absolutely go and read them. You need to. In order to be able to object to them, you need to be able to read them. You need to be able to understand them and why they are so perfectly objectionable. One of the reasons, I mean, one of the only legitimate reasons I can think of for not reading Ayn Rand's work it, is that it's terrible. I mean, on a, on a purely technical level, it's difficult to read because it's ridiculous. It's so perfectly absurd. Um, the characters in works like, for you know, the classic Atlas Shrugged are so ridiculous, the circumstances are so contrived, and the writing itself is so bad. But in order to understand Ayn Rand and what she was doing and why it is necessary to object to her, you need to read these books, you need to understand. Also, the, I mean, the inherent hypocrisy of the woman, that is part of it too. And it's something that her fans and her supporters tie themselves in knots trying to justify. She loathed poor people, drug addicts, people with mental health problems. Um, and she herself was a drug addict, a poor person, and a sufferer of mental health problems towards the end of her life. Um, by her own standards, by the philosophy she espoused, she was one of the people who should have been quietly left to die or actively done away with um, under her objectivist principles. That's part of the irony. But my God, I'm sure I'll get, I, I may even get them on this video. Those who try to tie themselves in knots, trying to justify that. It's unbelievable. Another one I can think of off the top of my head, Jordan Peterson. His work is terrible. I mean, it is absolutely terrible on any number of levels. But what I see people not read it, no. Absolutely not. Go and read it. Just make sure you read lots of other stuff as well. If you read other philosophers, that's the that's the main thing. You have to read widely in order to be able to see when someone is trying to bullshit you, when someone is trying to flimflam you, when someone is trying to pull the wool over your own eye, over your eyes. Um, and that is exactly, I would argue, what both Ayn Rand and Jordan Peterson do. It's what they have in common. Ayn Rand is essentially watered down, misapprehended Nietzsche. And Nietzsche himself, as a philosopher, has any number of problems. But go and read Nietzsche because he is far more eloquent complex and expansive 
than Rand is. Rand misapprehends Nietzsche's key points uh, and key tenets and then boils them into this incoherent philosophy that she called objectivism. Uh, it's worth reading for that. There are any number of novels that I absolutely love that I have enormous problems with. I mean, you can't really read anything that's that's uh, accounted as a classic without having problems with it. Take Dickens, for example. Dickens was a raging anti-Semite, as almost everyone in London was at the time of his writing. Anti-Semitism was baked into our culture so absolutely and comprehensively uh, that even someone who was in many other ways as liberal as Dickens was fell afoul of it. So if you read Dickens, you will find any number of, an of anti-Semitic stereotypes. One of the most famous is Fagin from Oliver. Fagin is a a perfectly foul anti-Semitic stereotype, and I mean absolutely flagrant on almost every level, perfectly foul. Um, but there are other elements of Dickens that make him worthwhile. Shakespeare, you will find any number of problems in Shakespeare in that regard as well. Although in Shakespeare, it's actually a little bit ambiguous as to whether he is buying into or reinforcing the pervasive anti-Semitism of his era or whether he is bringing it into question or parody. It's very, very difficult to tell. But that's the long and short of it. Now, Mouse, uh, before we really go on, you need to understand what Mouse is and why its banning is so objectionable and why its banning at this particular moment is so objectionable. Mouse is a book by Art Spiegelman, a creator, a comic book creator, a graphic novelist. Uh, it was published uh, in the 1980s through to the 1990s in a serialised format and it depicts the circumstances that led up to the Holocaust and also the direct experience of the Holocaust via Sp uh, Spiegelman's own family. It's almost it's autobiographical, but it's told in a fictionalized way. It's Art Spiegelman himself having conversations with his father about their direct experience of the Holocaust as a Jewish family in um, in Nazi Germany in the era before the lead up, the run up to it, and then the direct experience of it, and then the uh, the survival of it, which they were very they were phenomenally lucky to experience. It's but it's told in a comic book manner. Now, when I say that, I don't mean that it's told in a sort of japesy or um, a diluted manner Any in any way. it actu Art Spiegelman actually uses um, anthropomorphic characters, so he uses animal characters in place of uh, the human beings. In order to make it palatable, I suppose, it's a way of making it palatable to younger audiences. That said, he in no way dilutes the horrors or the tensions of the situation. It's a very, very disturbing book to read. As those who have it know, it's a very difficult read. The school board in Tennessee, the minutes, by the way, are readily available, and I will leave a link below to where you can get them. The objections that the school board came up with to justify their banning of it are pathetic. They are the same moral hand-wringing, think-of-the-children garbage that are always thrown up when it, when it comes to people of particular ideological persuasions trying to ban a piece of work that they feel is contrary or corrosive to their ideological position. Do I mean that members of the Tennessee School Board were active Nazis? No, I do not. But what I am saying is that the va a significant number of them are right-wing, a significant number of them are Trump supporters, and that does align you with certain perspectives that are not only redolent of Nazi ideology, but actually actively feed into it and become it inevitably. I mean, that is, uh, I, and I'm not going to argue with any of you about that, it is overt. When you've got hordes of Nazi, actual active Nazis and white supremacists in Charlottesville on the 6th of January 2021, um, actively obeying Trump, then I'm really sorry, fuck off. You know, absolutely fuck off. There is a reason why Nazis and white supremacists and racists of every stripe line up behind Trump and line up behind his ideology. There's a reason why that happens. Now, 
what they say in the minutes, what the people, th those members of the school board who are trying to get this book banned, what they say are things like, oh, well, we do, there, there's some bad language in this book. And there is, there absolutely is bad language. And it, <laughs> if, that's, <laughs> if that's your objection in a book that depicts mass genocide, then... You, a, you're missing the point. And th that's the thing as well. They're not missing the point. They are not missing the point. They understand the gravity and significance of this book and what Art Spiegelman is trying to do. I don't give them the benefit of the doubt in this regard. They are being insincere, as those who operate, I'm sorry, on the right so often are. They are being insincere. They want the book banned because they dislike the fact that their ideology dovetails with what it depicts. That's what they hate. That's what they despise. And they don't want young people being exposed to this material, not because of bad language, not because they fear what the imagery will do to them on an emotional level. They are doing it because they, do they literally don't want young people to know. They literally don't want young people to look at it, see it, and then see parallels with what they and their parents and their teachers and members of their school board and their politicians are vouchsafing and promoting, because they will. Children are not fools. Children are not idiots. And this, this is one of the best ways of attacking that kind of ideology and of dragging it into the light, doing it through art, doing it through something that is emotionally resonant. Beyond that, it's also, I mean, just going back to that point for a moment, it's also, it's it dovetails very nicely with the frankly moronic and idiotic attacks on what these people call CRT, critical race theory. Now, critical race theory simply doesn't exist in, in high schools. It simply doesn't. It is, critical race theory is something you specifically only start to study when you're at university level. In the UK, it occurs on courses called critical theory. If you study any kind of interpretive media, so that's any kind of art, any kind of academic subject like history or or like music, or like um, sculpture, anything, literature, anything to that effect, you have to do a critical theory course. What critical theory modules do is they teach you about the art of analysis. They teach you about the art of interpretation. They provide a history of the various traditions and ideologies through which you can filter your interpretations of media and to which you can apply to, ver to all types of media in order to derive different forms of significance and critical race theory is one of them and it exists because race exists because we have divisions between cultures and nationalities and so on and so forth that pervade our histories it, it to proclaim it illegitimate is to deny reality which is of course the entire right-wing project in a nutshell um you also have things like psychoanalytic theory for example you can filter uh, media and art and uh, even events like historical events through a, a psychoanalytic filter and derive very particular significances and interpretations from it. You can filter it through Marxist theory or post-structuralist theory or post-modernist theory or modernist theory and derive different significances and interpretations based upon those filters. Um, Critical race theory is just another one of those filters, and it allows you to appreciate events, art, created things, uh, human history itself on that level. That's all it's for. But this kind of action dovetails with the deliberate attempt on the right to bogeyman and strawman critical race theory. It's it's no different from when they use terms like woke, when they use terms like cancel culture. They're the ones, all, always, whenever you hear that term, you will find, yeah, cancel culture does exist, and it's primarily a product of these wankers who are trying to ban books en masse, who are trying to rewrite history. You see it here in the UK. You see it here in the UK with people who will not allow you to criticise or to vouchsafe a less than 
saintly opinion on people like Winston Churchill, despite the fact that those people protesting against the, those proclamations are have never picked up a history book since GCSE level, for the most part. They've never picked up a fucking history book. They've never read a book about Winston Churchill. If they did, they would understand that most of what we are taught on a cultural level and what we assume, the narratives that apply to him, are false. He is not some saintly hero who brought us single-handedly through World War II. He almost started World War III. He was a terrible man on almost every level. And were he not surrounded by some of the most terribly competent people imaginable who reigned in his excesses, the UK would not have survived the Second World War. That's the truth of the matter. He was a terrible man. He was an absolutely appalling human being on almost every level. But because we have this very particular cultural narrative, which has pervaded since, basically since the end of World War II, to. He's become a saintly figure now, particularly for people on the right who are not interested in reality. They are not interested in the complexities of the true history. So they try to erase and chop and change it. They try to cancel those who do try to provide you with the true history. That's the truth of the matter. And that is what this is. That is what this is. It is a denial of history. But beyond that, it's a denial of children of history because these people know somewhere in their the, the the wasp's nest of their of their minds they know that this kind of art is dangerous to them. They know that this kind of art is corrosive to their ideologies. Children who are exposed to this kind of art generally will not grow up to be Trump supporters. They will not grow up to be right-wing because they see where it fucking leads. Beyond that, there's something even more sinister going on here. There's something even more sinister going on here, which is the it's the hand-wringing, think-of-the-children assertion that children don't experience trauma, don't experience the full suite of emotions and thoughts and feelings that adults do. And often... To a very extreme and complex degree, they do. They do. I know most adults don't remember what it's like being a child. Most adults either shut it off or they it gets lost in the, the, the haze of adulthood and experience. So they simplify children for their own ends. They regard them as cartoon characters. It's simply not the case. You, children and young people experience difficulty and trauma and all manner of difficult and complex things throughout their entire lives throughout every experience that they have they're still formulating so so many things are traumatic to a child and revelatory at the same time the notion that they can't handle this or that they are ill-equipped to handle this is balderdash it quite frankly in the american school systems if a child can fucking survive the absolute horror show of the american public school system then they can handle this yeah. If they can handle watching the news and experiencing reality itself, they can handle this. And it's not even about that. It's obviously not even about that. They, these, The people who want this book banned, who don't want children to read it, are the same people who don't want children to see LGBTQ people out in the world, who don't want them reading books where, oh, you know, there are two princes instead of a prince and a princess or whatever. The reason is ideological, and it's all about adults who don't want this work to be out there. It's got nothing to do with the emotional well-beings of children. These people couldn't give a fuck about the emotional well-beings of children. We know that because of what they what they do to them, the way the way their very particular political and cultural ideologies are designed to traumatize children, to keep poor children poor, to keep them racially segregated. To to browbeat them to the point of suicide if they happen to be LGBTQ. So fuck that, you know? Fuck that nonsense, absolutely. Beyond that, let's talk about the work. Art Spiegelman's book is gorgeous. I've got a copy of it right over there. I, it's For me, it sits alongside... We have an equivalent artist here in the UK called Raymond Briggs, 
And Raymond, which you've heard about on this channel, by the way, I did. We did a wonderful discussion with uh, Kit Power and uh, Laura Maro on when the wind blows. When the wind blows is actually a very good um, analogy for um, Art Spiegelman's work for Mouse because it deals with very, very similar situations and in a very, very similarly traumatic way. But in the guise of a children's book, it is the kind of thing that you will find in school life. Libraries. It is the kind of thing also that certain factors in this country will argue the toss about, will try to get taken out of school libraries or try to keep their children from because it is it is traumatic and it is unpleasant. And again, it is highly politicized. It is coming from a very particular political perspective and drawing a line, a direct line from certain kinds of political ideology to human extinction, to the worst kinds of human atrocity. That's exactly what Mouse does. It's exactly what Mouse does, but it does it in a way where it's it's barely a mouse does it in a way where it's barely a molecule separated from reality. If you took away the animal characters, the anthropomorphic characters, which, by the way, the book increasingly does. As the book goes on, the distinctions between the animal characters start to dissolve and they start to become more human um, in the artwork. Just to really hammer it home, this is an, a history book. It's a history book written from the perspective of someone whose family actively experienced these things. It is bio, It is autobiographical. And it's that that they don't want. It is that that they don't want. They do not, they, in their minds, they, they don't want children to be exposed to the truth because it is corrosive to their very particular ideological persuasions. And they hide behind this obfuscation and hyperbole of morality, of protecting children's emotional well-being. Oh, we don't want swearing in the, in uh, circulating in the schoolyard. It's like, what do, do you, are you for real? You operate on a school board and you think that swearing, that you think that children aren't exposed to swearing of all things? piss off. Anyone who's on that school board should have just said to the person who brought that up, go fuck yourself. Get just you, you don't warrant a place at this board if you're going to talk like that. At least be honest. Come to the board and say, I don't think children should know this. I don't think children sh should be exposed to this because I believe it's corrosive to my ideology. That's the truth. That is the fundamental truth of the matter. By the by, I mean, inevitably, of course, it's had the opposite effect. And now Mouse is being bought. It's gone. It's shot right back into the bestseller list, which is awesome. It's being searched out by so many people. And I can only add my voice to that. Go and seek it out. Go and buy Mouse. Go and buy When the Wind Blows. Go and buy every contentious banned book you can fucking think of. Buy um, His Dark Materials. His Dark Materials is banned in lots of uh, US states because of its, frankly, its criticism of Christianity. That's largely it. And its promotion of a kind of not only metaphysical, but political anarchism. Go out there and buy it. Read it. Read every contentious thing you can possibly fucking think of, you know. Um, I would heavily, heavily advise that. Uh, particularly go and buy a mouse, not just because it's contentious and it's a kind of, there's a prurience behind, you know, sticking one to the man and whatnot. No, not just because of that. Read it because of what it is. It is an important book, mouse. I mean, you have to bear in mind, when, at, its, at the time of its publication, which was in the 1980s, it was actually quite contentious because it to depict the Holocaust in this way, to explore the Holocaust in this way, in a comic book format, was considered to be contentious comic books at the time were still generally considered to be a, a crude medium a base medium they were not considered to be literature this was before that great renaissance that happened during the mid to late 1980s with the likes of Alan Moore, The Sandman, V for Vendetta and whatnot. Those are other books, by the way, that are banned across the uh, in many, many areas that are well worth seeking out, well worth seeking out. <laughs> It was quite contentious because people felt that maybe because it was in a comic book format, it was almost diluting the significance of the Holocaust or belittling it. And that's simply not true. What it's actually doing is 
it's doing exactly the opposite. It is trying to show the true horrors of that situation and the cultural and political circumstances and ideologies that lead to it inevitably. And that there, that there is why you have objections to books like Mouse. That right there. Because we have allowed for certain ideologies and perspectives in our cultures and discourses that inevitably lead to what this book depicts. And those who benefit from those ideologies, those who promote those ideologies, don't like it. They certainly don't like children to know it. They certainly don't like children to know it. And that is what is truly behind this. Of course, once again, it's had the opposite effect. It's out there. People are buying it. People are searching for it. People are talking about it on the internet. Good. Absolutely brilliant. Go and fucking buy it. It is a wonderful piece of work in and of itself. And it's also a very nice way, despite what I said a moment ago, it is actually a very nice way of sticking two fingers up at those who would not have you or your children read it.